Okay, we are now recording. So welcome everybody because we're chatting about carrier oils. Yay! And <laughs> what's what? And when do you use which uh, one? And how do you use it? And can you use them for pets? And uh, what and, when, yeah, when do you think and really is this an is really is this an exciting topic? Like it is. It, it is. is. I'm telling you, it actually is. It's very exciting. So um, so anyway, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Allie Phillips. My business is Manifested Harmony. I'm an attorney. I'm a young living leader. I am a holistic wellness consultant and I am certified as an energy healer, master teacher in I've lost count of how many modalities and I specialize in pets and this is Rudy. So that, that is me. And Michelle is my dear friend and accountability partner. Uh, and that's a task. And we met at Young Living's Beauty School. We're coming up on what, four years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, why don't you introduce yourself to the group? I'm just Michelle Brown. <laughs> No, you're more than that. You're you're a licensed esthetician. Uh, I am a licensed esthetician. This is my twentieth year as such, and I can't. I like I I remember starting off being an esthetician like it was yesterday, and I was terrified to wax an eyebrow. Like I, I can't believe it's been twenty years, which is nuts. Um, and since then, because way back when, almost at the same time, twenty years ago, I got interested in essential oils, and I self taught a lot, and I took a lot of classes, and I took a ton of notes. Um, and then I'm a Young Living leader as well. I've used essential oils from about every company under the sun. And in the midst of all that, I, I kind of ended up on the carrier oil path as well, because I'm a green personality. I'm a why. I want to know why. Why do we want to use that particular one? Why don't we want to use this one? And so I study and I research and I started learning my own things. And currently I'm in um, skincare formulation classes, which is a whole nother subject for a whole nother time. And so yay to my greens. I, yay. <laughs> and, um, and so I've become more and more fascinated with carrier oils because for, for those of you who don't know, they have amazing therapeutic benefits on their own. And people generally don't realize that. And so when you, when you start to realize that and realize that you could take their therapeutic benefits and combine them with essential oils, that's amazing because now you've, now you've boosted both of them when you put them synergistically together. So I have notes because otherwise I'll, I'll talk till like, you know, the first Sunday in October about stuff I'm passionate about. And this is one they do, Lori, they do downplay the importance of carrier oils, but it's not anybody's fault. It's just, we don't know. Like, you know, we generally pick up, okay, if we pick up a carrier oil that's thick and heavy, we don't want to use that in a, in a, in a roller bottle, right? Because it doesn't really roll very well. So we like, okay, do I need a thick one or do I need a thin one? Do I need a smelly one or do I need one that doesn't smell? And that's usually how we choose because we've never known any different, right? So... You know, for people who, who are, they're, they're plant oils, they're actually lipids is, the, is, is more of a proper term, but carrier oils is sort of what we know them as. And, you know, carrier oils carry something like an essential oil over a large part of the skin. The carrier oils can actually penetrate the top two to three layers of the skin. Now, the skin has multiple layers. So it, it, it's not like an essential oil. It can't go, you know, way down in there, but it can penetrate the top two or three layers of the skin and make some really good changes, um, enhancements for those of us that are aging. <laughs> and so they can create a, a barrier to stop what's called transepidermal water loss, meaning hold the moisture in. That's what that means. It's kind of like mulch. Hold the moisture in, right? So they have beneficial properties on their own, meaning there are a lot of carrier oils. I don't really like the term anti-aging. I like to call it age management because to me, there's no such thing as anti-aging, but there are age management properties to them. There are healing on various levels, healing properties to them. And it's because a lot of these oils contain high levels of essential fatty acids, 
which EFAs might be a little strange to you, but I'm, I would imagine a lot of you have heard of omegas, omega-6, omega-9, omega-3s. Um, these are things that are extremely beneficial to the skin. They have high levels, a lot of them have high levels of natural vitamin E's, natural antioxidants. So you can see that these, these are more than just something to add to an essential oil to either dilute it or to, or to carry it a, f a farther way, if that makes any sense. Um, does that make sense to you, Allie? Yes, that absolutely makes sense. Because, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why do I need a carrier oil if I have an essential yeah. oil? So, yeah, so, I mean, that, that absolutely makes sense. So, um, so do you, do you want to talk real quick about dilution? I have this little chart that I was just going to share on the screen. Um, you know, as a, as, a, as a skincare person, I prefer that people dilute at least in the beginning when you're when you're getting started you should dilute if you have a lot more sensitivities you should dilute uh, if you're younger your children your pets older more thinning more mature skin and and my thing is if if you use an essential oil that's diluted and diluted doesn't mean that it's not strong and it doesn't work as well Diluted simply means, I like to think of it as more a, a, as, a, as, a, as a time release. You don't get a big whammy of essential oil in one spot at one time. It just kind of slows that down, so it's, a, so it's a, a gentler absorption. So don't think that dilution means it's not going to work. That's, that's not what, what that means. But if you can use an essential oil diluted in one of these fabulous carrier oils and it works for you, then you're saving pennies, right? So logistically that that makes complete and total sense to me how i would want to sort of dilute um now don't get me wrong if i have been known to just grab the peppermint straight out of the bottle and put it right here you know on a rough day i think we've all done that but but my point is dilution is actually not a bad thing and some people think that it that it weakens our oils and that's not the case um so when we, when we want to choose an essential oil, there are a lot of things that I just jotted down. So like I said earlier, we tend, to, we tend to decide on a carrier oil based on its thickness or its thinness. And, and that is something that you need to take into account. Like if you're going to put it in a roll-on bottle, you don't want something thick, right? So you need to take that into account. But let me give you some other things that you should take into account. The the penetration of the carrier oil. Some of them are slower to absorb, which may be what you want, depending on what you're doing, and some of them are faster. Slower to absorb oils are generally thick and viscous and greasy feeling, heavy feeling. They take a long time to absorb. And the thinner ones quite often are what we call dry oils. They absorb really fast. So someone like me with dry skin, if I use a drier, fast absorbing oil, it does nothing for me because my skin is so dry. I kind of need it to hang around a little while longer to put some moisture in there. So decide based on the penetration rate, how fast or how slow, how thin or how thick. Decide based on what you want to do with it. Do you, do you want, and, and we'll talk about some of this as we're going along, do you want to make a lip balm? Do you want to make a roller ball? Do you, do you want to make a, um, a body butter? Like what do you want to do with it? So that's going to help. Choose based on cost. There's a biggie. This one, how many, how many have heard of um, Baob oil? How many have heard of Baob? It's B-A-O-B-A-B. That is, a, that is a really cool carrier oil, but do you see this little teeny tiny vial? That little teeny tiny vial cost me two bucks. Wow. So, I mean, that's about, a, it's not even full, about 10 drops in there cost me $2. So you might not be wanting to fill a 10 milliliter roller ball with this oil. See what I mean? So you gotta, you gotta watch your costs, I mean, I do, maybe y'all don't, but I do. Um, so you wanna watch, watch the cost of your oils. Choose based on the smell. There is a carrier oil called neem oil, N-E-E-M. Um, is anybody familiar with neem? Neem is really good at um, 
tackling some lice issues. It's a good in, insecticide type thing. It's, it's good for acne. It stinks to high heaven. It's horrendous smelling. So we would use a little bit of neem with a lot of other things so that we could get some of the benefit of neem, but you're not gonna like the smell. So there again, yes, it's a, uh, Laura uses it on horses for a tick repellent. It works really well. It just, again, depending on what you're using with it, Lori's horse might not mind the smell of it like you would, right? Um, you also wanna choose based on nut allergies. If I'm giving a sample of something to anyone, I will always use a carrier oil where I don't have to worry about a nut allergy. So instead of using sweet almond oil, you might choose apricot oil or grapeseed oil. Um, I like to use grapeseed oil a lot for giving out samples. Don't have to worry about nut allergies. It's, it's very dry, it's very lightweight. Um, and so that, that's a good one. You also wanna choose based on shelf life. Carrier, Allie and I talk about this all the time because carrier oils have a shelf life. They, they go rancid, some of them a lot faster than others. Some of them really should be kept in the refrigerator. Other ones, okay, if you wanna keep them in the refrigerator, they'll last longer and some you really kinda of don't wanna keep in the refrigerator. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about shelf life too. Um, the biggie is we want to always look for, um, Janet, I've not, at, to this day, I've not known anybody who is allergic to grapes to not be able to use grape seed oil. That doesn't mean that's not possible, but uh, I've, I've not yet seen that. Of course, I've not, there's a lot of things I'm sure I haven't seen yet that's possible, but um, there's a lot of other choices other than grape seed oil that we'll talk about that, that they can use. Um, we always wanna look for unrefined, organic, and if it's something that says cold pressed, like some will say cold pressed, we always wanna look for unrefined, organic, cold pressed, um, virgin. Some of them will say virgin or not, but unrefined meaning it's as nature intended it to be. It wasn't, it, it didn't go through a lot of processing to change its color or change its smell or change its texture. It's as nature intended it to be, and there's where our beneficial properties are. When we go refining something, we're losing the beneficial properties. So, and my other thing is I always say, you know, start with small amounts. Don't go getting a, 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 a gallon of oil when you don't really know what you're gonna do with it because, you know, it, it, it might go bad and then you're gonna waste a lot of money. So those are the things that I suggest on how do you start choosing which oil might be best for what you want to do. Do we, right, so we, do we want to start going through? Yeah. Okay. All right. And if everybody, if you can make sure you've muted yourself, I'm, I'm picking up background noise, but yet it appears everybody is muted. So I am not sure what that is. So, um, all right. You want to start with coconut oil? Yeah, because most people know coconut oil. And so somebody just asked in the chat about when you know a, a carrier is rancid. So and it, this is a, a, a coconut oil that is a type that most people just know from the grocery store. This one is organic, virgin, unrefined. Okay, it's gonna have a, a heavy coconut smell because it hasn't been refined to take the coconut smell out. It's, it's cold in my house right now, so it's solid. You all are probably familiar with the fact that when it gets warm, it turns liquid, which is sometimes good and sometimes annoying, depending on what you're doing. So this is not a good choice to put in a roller ball because if it gets cold, it's, it's gonna get solid and you're gonna roll and nothing's gonna happen, right? Um, coconut oil is available in a liquid, which is called a fractionated coconut oil, okay? And even though a fractionated coconut oil is a good choice for a roll-on, it's not really my favorite choice because what happens is when this gets refined, in order to make it a liquid for its convenience, we lose a lot of the beneficial properties to it. So I don't ever use liquid coconut oil. I'll just use a different carrier. But for some people, this is, this is a good one. Um, a fractionated coconut oil, a lot of massage therapists like to use it because it, it gives them enough of a slip without being, you know, super heavy. 
Um, so that's a thought, but if you're wanting the, the, benef the benefits of it, this is, your liquid is not a good choice because it's been refined. Um, yes, they take, they take out a fatty acid called mm -hmm. lauric acid, and that is a very health benefit fatty acid. So they take it out and that's what makes the fractionated, so. But again, there's a big call for it because it's, you know, it's convenient. So, you know, a lot of them, like this one, has a best buy date on it. So we don't have to really question when this is gonna go bad, it's on here. So a lot of the places, everywhere that I purchase from will have an expiration or a best buy date on it. I don't like buying from, and I get most of mine from, from suppliers. Um, in larger quantity, but I like, I like it to have a Best Buy or an expiration date on it so that I know. The tricky thing is that's gonna be dependent on, on where you get it. I mean, cause you can get coconut oil from someplace else and it's gonna have totally, totally different. Sometimes they can last up to five years. Coconut oil will usually grow mold on it look kind of funky when it's getting rancid. Most of the time they smell, you're like, ooh, that does not smell good. I mean, you can normally tell when a carrier goes bad um, by the look and by the, by the smell of it. But coconut oil, if it's a good unrefined, will generally last quite some time because it has antifungal, antimicrobial um, properties to it. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we like coconut oil. So it has natural properties in there that keep it from going rancid fast. The, the issue with coconut oil is that it's very heavy. It, it's, very, it's, it's very greasy feeling and a lot of people don't like that feel. So I don't typically use it by itself on a carrier. Um, I'll mix it, I'll mix it with other carriers. So I might use a little bit of coconut oil with other things. And that way you get some of the benefits of it but not all of that feel, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I, I love it in DIY yeah. lip balms. Yes. Love that. Um, liked it in the, in the lip balms because you're getting the good properties to it. Mm -hmm. it. As a skincare person, and I get a lot of heat from this one, you, you do you, boo, as the cool people say. Um, I like it from here down. Coconut oil is not one of my favorites for the face. There are some people who do have reaction to it and they'll say, oh, my skin feels so good. It might feel good, but if your skin could speak, <laughs> it doesn't really like it. So for, for me, as an esthetician, from the neck down is my favorite. I, there are a lot of other carriers for the face that, that I prefer. So um, anybody have a question on coconut oil? Because that's kind of a, a general, most people are familiar with it. Yeah, and this one is good, good for dry skin, right? It's, it's good for really dry skin because it's yeah. so heavy. So your legs, you know, I don't know about your, my legs are very dry, especially in the winter time. And then a little bit goes a very long way. And it's really not very expensive. I mean, you're going to pay a little bit more for, you know, virgin and unrefined, but it's really not very expensive for how long it lasts and the little bit that you use at a time. Um. We did have a question early on about if, if, if you can talk about which of these may stain fabric. So usually co um, coconut oil um, is clear. What, 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 what? Coconut oil is clear. So yes. I, I can't imagine that that would stain anything. I would imagine they're probably think, staining like leaving an oil spot mm -hmm. on sheets or clothes or whatnot. Yeah. Um, fractionated coconut oil usually does not. Um, your, your lighter oils usually do not. Those heavier, greasier ones can leave, you know, an, an oil stain. Massage therapists kind of need to worry about that because they're using all that oil on their sheets and then it doesn't look good to have oil, oil spots on them. So um, Melissa, Melissa asked a question that she got a fractionated coconut oil and it didn't smell like coconut oil at all and I'm smelling mine which I just opened this for the first time last night and there's really no scent. Fractionated remember removes things it also removes the scent because a lot of people do not want the scent of coconut 
in whatever it is they're doing. So when they refine it and make a fractionated coconut oil, not only do they take away lauric acid, which has some really good benefits, it takes away the scent as well. And they can use solvents to do that. They can use heat to do that. They can use chemicals to do that. A lot of times they use all of the above to do it. And so we lose the scent, which there again, some people, that's why they buy it because it doesn't have that, that strong aroma to it. Yeah, because the- um, right. you, won't, you, won't have that, you won't have that smell with- Yeah, because this coconut. really smells like coconut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so great question. Yes. So, and the other thing, like I think somebody was saying about a, about a sugar scrub, you know, and if you, if combine it, like if you want to use this, combine it with something else so that you, you get the properties of an, of an unrefined, but you're not getting all that scent or choose a different carrier oil, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a slew of carrier oils. So speaking of refined and unrefined, like here's a grapeseed oil and this bottle it's, it's got an expiration date on it, but this is refined. So there's not anything wrong with a refined oil, but if I'm wanting this for its beneficial properties, I don't want a refined grapeseed oil. I want an unrefined grapeseed oil. And typically an unrefined grapeseed oil has a darker color. It has a little more smell like Allie's is a little more yellow than mine. It's got a, a little bit of a scent. Grapeseed doesn't have a very strong scent to it anyway, but it's just light. It's nice, <laughs> and I can't figure out what it is. It's, it's really seed. nice. <laughs> like, it, this yeah. is a, you know, grapeseed um, is, a, is a very light scent. It's a very fast absorbing oil. It has um, properties to it that are a little more astringent so guess who that would be better for? Kind of normal to oilier skin. If we're talking about doing something for the face, um, it, it just absorbs. Like I just put a tiny smidge on my hand and it's gone. So for me, it, it's not very beneficial for me because my skin is so dry. But someone who needed something that was fast absorbing, it has great anti-inflammatory properties to it. It has great antioxidant properties to it, which means it has some natural you know, vitamin E's. It's a good inexpensive carrier oil for making rollerball bottles. You know, it doesn't have that greasy feel because it absorbs very quickly. So grapeseed oil is my normal go-to for a rollerball. That's and the it. shelf life. The shelf life is 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 generally, and you can you can smell grapeseed when it's when it's going rancid. It's it's got a funky smell. And again, start off buying smaller quantities, not giant bottles, until you know which ones are your favorites and which ones you're gonna go through. I mean, there's a lot of rollerball bottles you can get out of the bottle that Allie is holding in her hand. So a little bit of oil will go a really long way. So generally grapeseed is gonna be good for a year to two years. Grapeseed is one of those that you can refrigerate if you're not using it often and that will extend it out to about two years. I, you know, I get, you know, if you get smaller bottles, you're gonna, hopefully you'll use it a lot faster than two years, but you can refrigerate that one so that it will last about up to two years, but always check for a date because depending on where you buy it, it may have an expiration date that's gonna differ from what I'm telling you. So you really need to kind of check when you're purchasing. So what I love about all of these is, well, not all of them, but almost all of these carrier oils we're gonna talk about tonight are, they have an anti-inflammatory antioxidant A benefit lot. to them. And if, if you go through your Young Living skincare products and start looking like this grapeseed is in the Boswellia wrinkle cream. Mm -hmm. And you're going to start to realize there's a method to the madness mm -hmm. in what they chose. Yes. So, yeah. So I actually wrote some down. So after you're done talking, I'll chime in and say, oh, and it is in this yeah. product. When, when Young Living formulates things, that there's always a reason for every single ingredient they, they, they put in every product they make, which is fascinating. Yeah. So I'm going to guess that most everybody has heard of sweet almond oil. Um, I don't. I have the other one, I don't think. No, I don't. Generally, this, this was purchased at a local health food store. And when I get it for my normal suppliers, again, the color is a little more yellow. Um, I, 
I have certain places where I like to purchase things, but sweet almond oil really doesn't have much of an aroma. It's a little bit heavier feeling. This one is good for about a year, and if you refrigerate it, you can take it to about two years. Same thing with essential oils. You don't want to like them sitting out, hanging out in the sun. They're better off in a, in a, in a cabinet in the dark, but if you refrigerate it, you'll get about two years out of it. Sweet almond oil is high in natural vitamin A, vitamin E, manganese, zinc. It supports skin regeneration. Like, hello, at 50, almost four years old, I need some skin regeneration. It's soothing. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's an antioxidant, which fights off all the free radicals. It helps maintain skin elasticity and suppress the signs of aging. This is a really good oil <laughs> for a lot of things. Um, and again, you can use just all sweet almond oil if you want to. I like to mix carriers. And once you learn the different properties of different carriers, you'll want to mix them too. But this is another one that's, that's fairly inexpensive. Sweet almond oil is, is pretty inexpensive. But anything that you're looking at for soothing, anti-inflammatory, like if you wanna use something for knees, elbows, uh, you know, things like that, but also great for the signs of aging. So would you use this on your face? Yes. Excellent. Now, I, I again, like to mix, but I, but I certainly would. Sweet almond oil would be one of the ones in, that I would mix into something for face. So when I think about using it for skin regeneration, I'm instantly thinking putting it in a roller bottle, having it on hand with whatever skin essential oils you want to use for those cuts, scratches, and things like that. Is that the right way of yep. thinking about almond oil? Yeah, you can. You know, you can put it in a roller. You can put it in a little dropper, you know, dropper bottle um, if you want to do that. I have blends that I make in, in little bottles, you know, with flip tops and that way I can just shake out a few drops. But yes, yeah, so that's that's a really good basic everybody have carrier oil. And so is olive oil. So olive oil, you know, again, where I get my olive oil is, is going to be a little different because they come in dark bottles, but I'm sure you all are familiar with olive oil from the store. Same thing. You know, you want extra virgin, you know, or uh, unrefined, cold pressed, you know, with your olive oil. The thing with olive oil is that it tends to have, you know, more of a scent to it that some people don't really like combined with their essential oils. So it's, it's, it's not a, a, a carrier that I like to use on its own. I might mix a little bit of it for its properties in with other carriers. It's a very, um, very high in antioxidants. Which is, which is great for the skin. It attracts moisture. That's also great for the skin. It repairs dry and sun damaged skin. It's anti-inflammatory. Olive oil is actually for cancer patients who have to wear wigs and, they're, and they don't have hair and their scalp is very dry and flaky and itchy. You will find a lot of places suggest a smidge of olive oil worked into the scalp to help that. Um, it can be very heavy feeling, which is another reason that olive oil is typically not chosen for a carrier by itself because it can feel pretty heavy. But it has great properties, again, to mix with some other things. And olive oil is not very expensive either. So I, so I have a question. So many of these have antioxidant properties and why, mm -hmm. why do we need antioxidants for our skin? I mean, we know that our skin is our largest organ. It has its own microbiome, but what, what do the antioxidants do for the skin? You know, we, we wouldn't need them if, if we didn't have pollution in the environment and everything that we've got surrounding us that are bombarding our skin on a daily basis that are, that are, knocking the skin's barrier down and, and tearing down our collagen and our elastin and everything that used to give us fat cheeks when we were a little kid and all this tightness and all this, all these free radicals just attack the skin and break it down over time. That's why our, our jowls tend to go south and everything tends to go south. And so antioxidants are really good 
um, you know, Ning Charette is for all of you that know anything about Ning Charette is full of antioxidants. And so antioxidants, we need them for our organs, but they're also really great for the skin because of all the damage that we do from using soaps that aren't pH balanced. And like I said, the pollution in the air, some people smoke, um, you know, what you eat can be seen on the skin. And so we need those antioxidants to protect the skin and get our cells to regenerate in a, in a, in a manner that was more like when we were young instead of going so slow as we get older. And so it really helps cellular regeneration, which as we age, awesome, we need. Olive oil, you should be able to keep olive oil for about two years, just you know, in a, in a dark cabinet. Um, avocado oil. Avocado oil is a good one. This one, avocado oil will last about a year. If you refrigerate it, it'll last about two years. If you get a true, I don't know if I can get this on my thing. If you get a true avocado oil, again, just like we said before, remember organic and cold pressed and the whole nine yards, um, it's, you can't see it that well, but it's, it's, it's green. On this tissue, it turns more yellow. But a good, true, unrefined avocado oil is green. Um, it has um, not so much of a scent to it, but it's very thick, meaning it's a very slow to penetrate on the skin. So if you don't have dry skin, you won't like avocado oil. Again, a little bit of avocado oil mixed with some of the other ones that we talked about, you get the benefits of avocado oil without that heavy feeling. Avocado oil can help make brown spots less noticeable. Notice my words help make brown spots less noticeable. So if you're gonna go, oh, I'll put it on that brown spot right there, make it disappear, that is probably not gonna happen, okay? But it is anti-inflammatory, it is moisturizing, it helps maintain our collagen, our firmness of our skin, and it can help make the brown spots less noticeable, not disappear, but it is very beneficial for that because some people will say, I'm starting to look kind of splotchy. You know, like I've got these brown splotches going on. And so avocado oil is a great oil for facial skin, but I wouldn't use it straight because it's so thick. It's, it's, it's very heavy feeling. Nobody wants to put that on and then go to bed and like blah, you know, but mix it. That is a really good one to mix with others. So avocado oil is in the new Savvy Minerals concealer. Yeah. It's also Which, in what, the rose so ointment. Most, most yeah. the conceal around here, this area is starting to show signs of aging. Is mm -hmm. it not? Otherwise, why, why need a concealer? <laughs> yeah. Your skin's not starting to age. You don't need a concealer. And so what a great carrier oil to put in that product. Yeah. I mean, there's a million they could have chosen, but they chose one that made sense for where the application was. It's really good. Yeah. And yeah. this tends to be dry up underneath the here too. So avocado is a good choice for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. They also put it in the rose ointment. Healer. Mm -hmm. Rose ointment is a healer, anti-inflammatory. Yep. So jojoba oil. I know most people know about jojoba oil, right? Again, mine comes in a brown, but mine looks like um, Allie's. Jojoba oil as a decent, you know, light scent as well. Jojoba oil is one of my favorites for all sorts of things because it's the closest match to our skin's, what's called sebum, the natural oil that our skin produces, which even if you have dry skin, your skin is still producing some natural oil to it. And jojoba oil is the closest match to our skin. It's actually a wax, it's not even an oil. It just looks like an oil, but it's, it's, it's technically it's called a wax. But jojoba oil, because it's so high in antioxidants, hi Rue. He likes it. Cause yeah. this, this is my number one to use with animals, especially cats, because we need to dilute our essential yeah. oils in a carrier oil and jojoba um, with avocado as a backup. Those, these are my favorites for animals. Well, and, and jojoba is not, it's not heavy and greasy feeling. So if you're going to put it on a dog, and if they're like mine, 
who immediately jumps on the sofa, guess what? If you use something that's heavy and greasy, you're going to know it when the dog gets up on the sofa and you've got all that over the sofa, right? And a cat doesn't want something that feels incredibly greasy. So He's Hummer, licking the bottle. <laughs> really? A hover yeah. is, a, is a great choice for pets. You only need a tiny smidge. And it's one of my favorites to use straight up or mixed with anything else. A good jojoba can last you about five years. So it, it, because it's high in antioxidants, it's high in things that don't go rancid. So it has a long shelf life. It's anti-inflammatory, it's antimicrobial, it's extremely high in natural vitamin E, which is why it lasts so long. It's good for normal skin, dry skin, sensitive skin, facial skin, body skin. Like it's just a, a good one. And it's really fairly inexpensive. Again, get yourself a small bottle. Don't get a ginormous bottle. And That's it is in an outrageous number of Young Living products. I mean, it mm -hmm. is unbelievable. There's like over 40 products. So that, that tells you something. I mean, they're putting it in a lot of their ointments and um, bar soap, and mm -hmm. it's in the lipsticks. So, And it, it's, like, it's just a really, really great oil for anybody and everybody. I mean, you know, if you had to, if you had to say, okay, but can I have one universal oil that would be good for pretty much anybody for everything? I'm probably going to choose, I'm probably going to choose jojoba. I do believe. Um, apricot is, is actually one of my favorites that a lot of people aren't even familiar with. Apricot kernel oil. It's a year, up to two years if you refrigerate it. So it's got a decently long shelf life because it's high in antioxidants. It's anti-inflammatory. It has a very light feel. It absorbs very quickly. So if you're looking for something that doesn't feel greasy, apricot oil is fantastic. It soothes dry, itchy skin and redness. Anybody have any of that? Dry, itchy skin or redness. So where would that be good? That would be good in a facial product, right? For somebody who has dry and red skin, if they're sensitive skin, that would be good in a facial product. It's great, like after, after I shave, I'll mix it with something that's got a, a little bit, um, it's a little heavier, so this one's drier, and I mix it with a little heavier because it's great for sensitive skin and my legs are very sensitive. Um, it's a super good one too. It's great to mix with other carriers. It's good for collagen and elastin. So it's just, it's a great facial oil. It has a, a very light scent too. It's not anything that's overpowering. You know, and, and what did you say yesterday, Allie, when you were talking about something that said it was odorless? Which oil were you talking about when it said it, it was that a butter or an oil when you said it was odorless? Uh, uh, sunflower. Because most of, and I have sunflower, we'll get that. Yeah, next. I think we're talking about that yeah, next. Next, because when something says that if it's natural, it's unrefined, it's organic, it's not processed, it's, you know, the whole deal, and it, and it bills itself as being odorless, it just means that there's nothing added to it to make it smell like something. What you're smelling is, is the plant, kind of like we talk about with essential oils. When they're pure, peppermint doesn't smell like a candy cane. That means you don't have real peppermint if it smells sweet like a candy cane, right? So, Carrier oils smell very, a lot of them smell very earthy. They smell like the, the seed, for the most part, of the plant. And so sometimes that's relatively pleasant. Most of the time, with the exception of neem, they're not horrendous. And then when you add your essential oil or you add a other couple carrier oils to it, it all kind of blends in and you don't even notice it. So sunflower, I, I really like sunflower. This one, this one flies under the radar. This is we're getting into what I call more specialty oils. I would use apricot either by itself or with Kathy or with something else, just depends on what I'm doing with it. I would do it either way. Um, sunflower is very light, it's non-greasy. It's, it's, it's what I like to call specialty oils. The ones that we've gone over thus far are kind of our basic ones. You've probably heard of all of them or at least the majority of them. And now we get into ones that are more specialty or a little more targeted. And so the specialty oils for me are great to add to some of the basic ones because they also tend to start getting a little more pricey. Sunflower is not too pricey. Sunflower will last you about a year. 
It's very high in natural vitamins A, B, D, and E, which are all super good for the skin. Retinol or Retin-A, for those of you who are familiar with that, is vitamin A. It's a, a synthetic man-made version of vitamin A. For me to say that something that's high in vitamin A in the natural world is gonna work exactly the same as retinol that you get at the pharmacist or your doctor's office is not true. But if you don't want a prescription for retinol or Retin-A, but you'd like to try something natural that's gonna go that same direction, then you want a carrier oil that, that's high in, in vitamin A. Sunflower is one of them. It really doesn't have a smell. It is very light and quick absorption. So again, that's great for face, it's great for body. It helps maintain moisture. It helps to repair the skin barrier because we have this barrier on our skin that keeps good bacteria in, bad bacteria out. So it helps to repair that. It is helpful for eczema, dry or chapped skin, and mature skin. So sunflower oil is great. Like I've, I've got this issue from wearing gloves over 20 years, which is now starting to creep up on my hands. So I use sunflower a lot in everything I make that goes onto my hands because it's super helpful. It's high in what's called linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is one of our fatty acids that we talked about in the very beginning. And it is great for eczema and dry chap skin and irritations, right? Um, and it's antifungal. So sunflower is, is one of my favorites that flies under the radar a little bit. Sunflower is a little bit heavier than the apricot. So you can mix the two of them together. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason as to what, like, you know, it's like, oh, don't mix this with this. No, if you, if you want that, mix it. Keep in mind the scent, keep in mind the feel, and keep in mind what you're trying to accomplish based on what the properties of those oils are. So Young Living has put sunflower oil in 66 of their products, including the Art Intensive Moisturizer. Mm -hmm. I mean, sunflower is yes. just, a, a, it's like the jojoba. It's just a really good, basic, not super expensive oil that I think doesn't get used as much as it should. Here's one that's been around for a long time, but suddenly everybody asks about it, hemp seed oil. Everybody's like, oh, hemp seed, hemp seed. Hemp seed oil, this one will last about a year if it's refrigerated. It's very green, like we were talking about with avocado oil. Um, you're not gonna be able to see inside the bottle, but it's, it's, it's very green. And it is rich in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. It helps to build strong cellular membranes. It's great for soothing skin. So skin that's irritated, skin that's dry or itchy. Um, hemp seed is great for that. It is a great anti-inflammatory. It's a good carrier oil for skin that's in need of healing, but it's, 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 it's almost sticky to the feel, like I now have a little bit on my fingers from opening that bottle. It's almost sticky. It's not one that you're gonna wanna use by itself. So you just use a little bit of hemp seed with a lot of something else or two or three other things so that you get some of the benefits of the hemp seed without having that that feel, because that feel doesn't feel very good. It's very sticky tacky. So it's best mixed with other carriers. And it also is prone to oxidation. I mean, it's, it's, it's prone to going rancid pretty quickly. So you really should keep it refrigerated so that it'll last you about a year. It's got some great properties, um, but because of the chlorophyll in it, it, it it'll go rancid if, decently quick if you don't keep it in the fridge. So hemp oil is really good, like I said, for skin that's in need of healing. That's a, that's a good one, dry, itchy skin. So I like to use that one for facial skin a lot. Um, I would imagine argan oil is in my little box here of ones that are in the refrigerator. So I'd imagine most people have heard of argan oil and you won't be able to see, you won't be able to see that either, but there's, it looks like sediment at the very bottom. It's because this has been in the refrigerator. And so it will get cloudy in the refrigerator, but once it sets out for a while, it'll go back to being you know, totally liquid. But argon is up to two years, even longer if it's kept in the refrigerator. And you see, I, I only have a, I have a small bottle because again, I mix just a little bit with a lot of other carrier oils to do what I need to do. Argon is, it reminds me of lavender in the essential oil world. This is probably the most adulterated carrier oil there is because it's so popular. If you go on Amazon and pull up argon oil, you'll see 
tons of argon oils. I mean, for hair and for skin and this and that. And so you really want to trust your supplier. You really want to get a good one because that one is highly adulterated and you, you, you'll get scammed on argon oil. So you want to really find a good place to get it. Um, argon is fantastic for facial skin. It helps to combat wrinkles in case that rings a bell with anybody. So it helps wrinkles, elasticity, firmness of the skin. Hello, that's for me. Anti-inflammatory, it's skin rejuvenating. It can be helpful for scars, acne, eczema, psoriasis. And for me, I love to take a little bottle or a little eyedropper bottle and I like to put in jojoba, argon, and rosehip, which we'll be talking about in a second. Jojoba and argon and rosehip are great for age management of drier skin. You could also do jojoba and, I mean, um, argon, rosehip, and grape seed if you wanted to do something that was a little lighter weight or apricot seed, like if you had you know, more oily skin, if you felt like jojoba was a little bit too heavy for you. Um, but combine argon and rosehip with whatever other, other carrier that you want to, and it's fantastic for the face. Really nice. So Young Living has put argan oil in the Mira face cleansing oil. Mm -hmm. If you've never tried that, you, mm -hmm. you are missing out. It is amazing. And they also put it in the Mira hair oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Hey, have you all done a, an oil cleanse for your face? What's called an oil cleanse? You use oil to actually clean the face. Young Living has one that's, that's the Mira cleansing oil, which is upstairs in my bathroom. I absolutely love it. I also use my concoction. So I just flip around between the two because I love them both. And, and with an oil cleanse method, there's nothing in the bottle. There's, 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 no, there's no water in the bottle. It's all oils. And you're like, oh, I have oily skin. I can't do that. Water doesn't break down oil. Oil breaks down oil. So if you have oily skin, that's even better to use an oil cleanse method, believe it or not. So the trick with oil cleanse, whether you make your own out of any of these that you want to do, or whether you use Young Living's, which is excellent, dry hands, dry face. So you know, I'll have my makeup on, dry hands, dry face. Put a few drops in your hands, Rub your hands together, dry hands. I'll say that a million times because it's important. Dry hands, dry face. Rub your hands together. Work that oil in. Yes, I go over my eyes, my mascara, my eyeliner, the whole nine yards. Work that in and you'll see like you're starting to look like something from a Halloween. I mean, because all the makeup just starts going blah all over the place. Work it in really, 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 really well. And then what I like to do is take a really warm washcloth, don't get it scalding hot, but a really warm washcloth and lay that on top of the face and just for, just have seven seconds of me time, just have seven seconds of you know inhaling your carrier oils and obviously put in some myrrh or some frankincense or some geranium or some of your favorite facial oils, right? And just, and just breathe in and let that warmth sit there and then wipe that excess oil off. And then I don't even put a moisturizer on that night. It's maybe if you, you can, if you want to, but it's like perfect. I love an oil cleanse. And, and if you've never tried it, you need to try it. You can do it with just jojoba oil if you want to. You can do it with just apricot oil if you want to, just to try it. Whatever you've got at the house, just try it. I tend to like like the ones that I told you because they're really good at age management. So I tend to like to combine those or use the one from Young Living. I do that once a week. And as we go into drier weather, I'll do it twice a week. And exactly. oh my gosh, if you've never done it, you've got to try it. Yeah, you, need to, you need to at oh, least try it. You need it's to amazing. Try it. Yeah. Um, anybody heard of maracuja oil? Maracuja oil is also what's called passion fruit oil. And this is one of the few carries that actually has a, a nice scent to it. It doesn't smell as strong as a passion fruit, but I mean, it's an, it like, you're like, oh, that's pretty. You know, most of the carrier oils you smell and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. But I wouldn't say they smell pretty. Passion fruit oil to me smells pretty. It's not very heavy, but some people have heard of the word maracuja, but it's, but it's passion fruit oil. Is, is what that is. Two years, longer if refrigerated. 
And this one is super high in natural vitamin C and E. So it's great for aging dry skin. Ta-da! Anti-inflammatory. It also relieves itchy skin and it's also great for, for age management or even after sun care. Not the cheapest. I don't remember how much this is off the top of my head, but the specialty oils are going to be more expensive. But just use a smidge of them, like I said, in some of those other basic carrier oils so that you're getting the benefit of these more expensive targeted ones, right? Without, I mean, you could use this all on its own if you want to, but it'd probably be a little pricey to do that. But I love passion fruit oil. That's a really good one for facial skin too and age management. And Allie's probably favorite, rosehip. Rosehip. Rosehip will have a natural mm, orangey red tint to it. Um, if you get a good one, unrefined. And rosehip, get this, this is important. Rosehip has a shelf life of about six months. Very short, get a small bottle, very small bottle. Um, and if you, it, 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 it has to be refrigerated, it really does. It'll go rancid pretty darn fast if you don't keep it in the refrigerator. Um, rosehip is fantastic for, it's high in vitamin A, wrinkles, slows the signs of aging, helpful for scarring, psoriasis. Again, another one that may help to make the brown spots on the face a little less noticeable. It's fantastic to mix with something else. Remember I said a while ago, rosehip, a little rosehip, a little argon, a lot of jojoba. That's a great facial mixture right there for aging skin. I love that. But its biggest thing is don't forget to put it in the refrigerator. Now, I have rosehip in here. This doesn't sit in the refrigerator. This is just a small amount mixed with other things. And those other ones have a good amount of vitamin E in there. And I, I only make enough, you know, I'll use that up in about two months time. So I'm not worried about it. But my, my bigger bottle um, stays in the refrigerator. Um, Lori was asking about distributors or suppliers. I tend to get mine more from actual suppliers, but this is a weird name and so everybody laughs when we say it, but that's where Allie's bottle, if you go on Amazon and you look up Dr. Adorable, I know, it's the most bizarre name I've ever heard. <laughs> Dr. Adorable, <laughs> unrefined, organic, and he has small, he's got small bottles all the way up to big bottles. And so that's a great place for you to start tinkering around with carrier oils is to, to, to go get Dr. Adorable because you can get small sizes. That way you can get small sizes of several ones and play around. Yeah, and he actually has a couple of kits because um, I know um, these are all four, four ounce mm -hmm. and there were five of them that came together and it was like $25. Yeah. I mean, Which it's, is great. yeah, so um, I, yeah, I have been getting Dr. Adorable for years and just, I just found it interesting when just last week I asked Michelle, I'm like, you know, what do you think about this? And she's like, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, it, it's, it's, it's a good it's comp kind of weird, company. Yeah. And I've never, I've never looked to see if Dr. Adorable has their own website so that you can they order do. straight from them. I would imagine they do. So if you don't want to use Amazon, you can order straight from them. Yep. Um, they, there's they also do. another one that has a weird name it's called Coco Jojo and it's one word it's Coco C-O-C-O-J-O-J-O -O -J -O, Coco Jojo one word and they have some some good carrier oils at pretty decent prices too. I don't think Coco Jojo makes as, as small of quantities as Dr. Adorable so that is a great place you know for you to start off with them. Um, and before we wrap up, we wanted to talk about three butters really quickly because they're technically carrier oils, right? So a lot of people have heard of, of shea butter. Shea butter is fantastic at, at deep moisture. So heavy duty dry skin, it's very healing for dry chap skin. It's a great thing to add to lip balms is a little bit of shea butter. It helps with stretch marks, scars. It's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. Um, and it, and it's nutty. So Allie has like a, like almost like a brick and the one that I have, you can see it's very, it's very chunky. Um, so it's very chunky. This is raw shea butter. If you get something that, if you order shea butter and it looks like body butter, it ain't shea butter. Okay. So 
watch and, and you want raw shea butter. You don't want something that includes shea butter. You want raw shea butter and sometimes it comes as, as chunks. And for what I use it for, this is my preferred way of getting it. But raw shea butter is fantastic um, for all of those things that I was telling you about. I love shea. I love shea. I mean, I can take a little bit and just put it straight on my hands and my hands are very, very dry. So some people, it's a, it's a little heavy to use by itself. They're like, mm, it's a little bit greasy. Okay, well, how about adding some cocoa butter to the shea? Cocoa butter is a, is a harder butter. And so if you mix the two together, then it's not quite so slippery, greasy. And so, Allie, do you have, okay, I was gonna say, she's got a block, I have a block, because again, the way that I use it, I prefer to cut off chunks, but make it easy for yourself. Oh, Rudy likes the cocoa butter. Oh, it smells so good. Uh, make it easy on yourself when you, when you purchase cocoa butter, again, we want that to be raw as well, we don't want it to be refined and have the good stuff taken out. You can get, they, they, it looks like, they look like little candy wafers. Anybody ever seen the little chocolate wafers that you melt to dip your strawberries in or whatever? That's what they look like. They look like little candy wafers. <laughs> and that tends to be a little bit easier for you. Uh, but the way that I use it, I like to have that like big, big chunk. So again, just look, look for a raw, unrefined raw, because that's where it's got the good properties. And cocoa butter has a, a scent. Both of these are nut butters. So if anybody has a nut allergy, it's probably not going to be a, a, a great choice for them. But cocoa butter has a scent. A lot of people love it. Oh, he's going to join now. He's Hi, like, Dean. Yeah. Um, so it has a scent. And some people either love it or they don't like it at all. And you can get cocoa butter that doesn't have a scent. But guess what? That means it's refined, remember? So which one do you want? Do you want the benefits of cocoa butter? Or do you want no benefits, but no smell? Like it, it depends on what you want. But Cocoa butter is, is, is fab. It almost has a chocolate kind of smell to it. So depending on what you mix it with, like peppermint and cocoa butter together, it smells phenomenal. Tangerine or orange and cocoa butter, the lemon and cocoa butter together. I mean, smell um, smells like a cake that you're baking, but you might not want that scent. So either get the refined version or don't get cocoa butter at all. Try something different, right? And then my one. And cocoa butter is very similar to shea, in that it, it's also high in antioxidants and it's anti-aging, anti-inflammatory, good for stretch marks, good for scars. It has a lot of the same benefits as shea butter. But like I said, it's, it's harder, it's firmer, and it, and it has a different scent. And there's a third one that I like. It's called mango butter. And everybody always gets excited and goes, ooh, I love the smell of mangoes. It doesn't smell like mango. <laughs> because, because again, it's from the seed. So it doesn't really have much of a, of a, of a smell. But it's a, it's a hard butter, too. Um, you know, when you put it in your hands, it kind of melts. But again, it's, it's something different than, than shea and cocoa butter. Those are the two probably norms. And there are a ton of butters, y'all. There's uh, Murumu butter. There's Illipi butter. There's, like, all these Africa. There's a ton. So, like, literally, there's a ton of butters. Um, but those are the three that are probably the most cost effective that are good for lip balms and body butters and things like that. Mango butter is also high in antioxidants. It helps to lessen the signs of aging. And again, it's harder than shea. So depending on what you're, you're doing, depending on what you want it for. And so butters can be carrier oils too, depending on you know, what you're doing. Like I said, if you want a lip balm or a body butter or something like that, mixing carrier oils and butters together is nice. So at my, at my holiday make and take that I have every year, we use the cocoa butter and peppermint oil and make a hot peppermint chocolate lip balm. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it is amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. And I said there, there are, oh, I don't know somewhere between 250 and 400 carrier oils. And so obviously we can't go over all those. So I wanted to go over the ones that most people have heard of so that now maybe you'd, you'll be able to choose 
what to pair with your essential oil because it makes sense based on the properties of the essential oil and the carrier oil. And maybe now you're not always just going to reach for the grapeseed oil or the fractionated coconut oil, but now you'll be able to kind of up the ante a little bit now with this information and just and just play around. Get yourself some small bottles and just start off and just kind of play around. And if you're like, oh, that feels too heavy, we'll add one that's lighter and make it a little lighter. If you're like, that doesn't feel heavy enough, add one that's heavier, make it a little heavier and just play with them. And then definitely try the oil cleanse method, even if you don't wear a lot of makeup. Even if you don't wear a lot of makeup, it's still um, a great, great way to cleanse the face. So I am going to email to everybody who has registered, Michelle put together a summary and I put it together in a graphic. So we're gonna email this to you and you can have it all, so. Yeah, and you can take your notes and kind of pair it with that right there and print it off and, and keep it. And then that'll be a really nice reference for you to help you, like I said, kind of up the ante with what you're, what you're using. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we will send that to you when welcome, we send Janet. you the recording. Yes. So any, so, um, so I just, I mentioned briefly, um, cause I do a lot of work with cats and I use carrier oils. Um, the jojoba, um, I really like the avocado and the grape seed. Those are the ones that I tend to go to um, the most, but honestly, any of these would be perfectly fine with animals. It's just, I, I tend to go to them. Um, you know, because the grape seed is not greasy. It's a very light aroma. And grape seed, you know, some people are concerned because of dogs with grapes. Grape seed is not the same as eating a grape. So you don't have to be, you know, worried about animals that you, you don't want eating grapes. It's, it's different. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, are, Michelle, are there any carrier oils that you would not use with, with kids or with older people with the elderly? No, you know, depend if you're doing something on the feet, obviously, then we want to be careful about, you know, how much slip we've got on the, on the feet without putting socks on. My favorite to use with like baby Connor, who's my 19 month old grandson, which is like crazy. Just, I know I look 35, you guys, but I do have a grandson. Um, I love to use apricot. Um, it's very dry, you know, because their skin is not very dry. They don't need a lot. They don't, they don't need something that's like heavy duty greasy. So I love to use the apricot seed for anything that I used for baby Connor. I love to use the jojoba because jojoba is so good for everything. Those are kind of like two, even the sweet almond oil is good. You just don't, you don't need a lot of it, but there aren't any, there aren't any that have, um, neem won't be a good choice. Like I said, that's your, <laughs> it's it stinks to high heaven but my daughter-in-law is is prepared for me to make something with neem in it because she's getting ready for the lice situation she's like you got to make something with neem in it but I said you have to you know combine it with other stuff but but no I said their skin is 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 great and you know if you've if you've got a little one with with baby eczema remember there were a couple on here that we read off that were that were good for that something for cradle cap so there are ones that you can sit there and, and, and tinker with and get really, really good results. Baby Connor has never had eczema. He's never had any baby acne. He's never had diaper rash um, because between the things that his Mimi tinkers around in my kitchen lab and makes and the seedlings line, he has got the prettiest skin. And I, I know he's my grandson, I have to say that. But it, literally he has the prettiest skin of any baby I've ever seen. We try to keep as many chemicals off of him as, as we can. All right, do we have any more questions? I'm not seeing any. Everybody's gonna go tinker with something new, I hope. Yes. If you're always a jojoba person, go get you something else. Yeah, so we have a question from Allison about how much of a carrier oil do you use? And I think it just depends on what you're making. So you follow a recipe. Yeah, and I don't, I, you know, it depends. Like this, it, this is all carrier oil in here. And it's just me, me playing. Remember I told you jojoba and argon and rosehip. 
and I, you know, one, one time I'll make it and go, oh, I think I want to use less jojoba and more archon. And one time I'll go, oh, I want to use more, you know, rosehip. I just play around. I mean, just, so literally take your graphic and circle two or three that you're like, okay, this is, I want to, I want to make um, something for age management, right? So circle two or three of those and then tinker around and see how you like the feel. Like I said, if it's too heavy, it's too light. It's like Goldilocks. Go this way, go that way, too heavy, too light. This one's just right. So no, it's not like baking. Don't make it hard. Yeah, so so Allison is looking for carrier oil recipes. So um, Allison, I, it, she's in my group. So um, there's some in our team page. There's going to be more coming, but you can you can find tons of recipes online. And the nice thing is, you just you really can't screw it up. Mm -mm. You can't. You just tinker around and find find what you like. Like find the oils that you like, and and then just start playing around with them. I mean, that's what Michelle and I do. We we're in our kitchen like mad scientists making stuff all the time. So yeah, just you can't go wrong. And it's just like essential oils. You you'll get drawn to certain ones, right? Like, you know, frankincense was like, yeah, when I first started. And now I feel like I crave it. And I know Allie loves her rose hip. Like you'll you'll just you'll fall in love with certain carriers because of the way they feel and because of the way they make your 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 skin feel you know, my super dry legs and all that kind of stuff. So you'll fall in love with certain ones. But I said, just, you know, be mindful of the cost when you're starting to, to play and get yourself some small bottles so that you can tinker. But I think you'll be really pleased with, with what you can do with carriers. You're like, wow, I just thought they were something like vegetable oil with fancy names. Like they're, they really, these are, these are God's plants too. It, they, these Carrier oils come from the seeds of the plants, where essential oils come from the resins or the needles or the leaves. So they're all coming, they're coming from similar plants, they're just coming from different places, which is fantastic. All right, I don't see any more questions. So I think we're gonna wrap it up and we'll send you the recording. And if you're watching the recording, you either know Michelle or you know me, so you can absolutely come to us with questions that you have. So thank yeah. you so much for joining in. This was a lot yes. of fun. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. It is back to Julie and G. Thank you for your time. All right. We will see you all later. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye, everybody.